Hey guys, my name is Frank and this is the Pothon Programming Video Log. Today I'm going to talk about how to put tile graphics into your game. So if you want some graphics that you've drawn yourself in your game, this is how you put those graphics on the screen according to a one-dimensional tile map. So stay tuned. In this video, I'm going to talk about what a tile sheet image actually is and the different components you need to be aware of when working with a tile sheet. I'm also going to go over how to draw that tile sheet to your canvas using a one-dimensional map array. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them in the comments section and definitely check out the fully commented source code that I have linked in the description of this video as well as the working example. So what is a tile sheet and how do I represent it in JavaScript? Well, this is my tile sheet image that I drew in GIMP. And all it is is just a big image comprised of smaller, uniformly sized tile images. So each one of these little squares is a tile. And the cool thing about tile maps and tile based games is I can take one tile image that I store once in my game assets. For instance, this guy right here, or actually better yet, this guy right here, and I can use it as many times as I want and redraw it onto my game map. So this whole big image is drawn just using this small graphic set. I have nine individual graphics, and as you can see, I have well over nine tiles in this game world. Probably, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this many tiles is stored in this map, but I reuse all of them to create a much larger game world. So that's what a tile sheet is. So now let's talk about what you actually need to know about a tile sheet to start using it. So what you need to know about a tile sheet is how many columns are in it. So this one has one, two, three columns and the dimensions of each individual tile. So each tile in this particular tile sheet has 16 pixels across and 16 pixels high, or it has a width and a height of 16 pixels. So how that looks in JavaScript is just like this. This is the tile sheet object, and this is going to help me communicate the different dimensions of my tile sheet to my rendering function. So this tile sheet has three columns, like I just showed you, and it has a tile height and a tile width of 16 pixels each. The image is just going to be a reference to our image object. So basically, I'm going to load this tile sheet into this image object inside of my JavaScript. So now that you know what a tile sheet is and some stuff about the dimensions, I'm going to show you how to actually render this to this. Now I'm going to talk about how we actually draw these tiles from the tile sheet over to the game board. So I'm going to take a look in the source code here and I'm going to scroll down to my world object. Inside the world object, I have the map array, the one dimensional map array that describes my on screen tile map. So if you take a look and you look closely, I have different values in this tile map and they clearly correspond to the different images that you see on the screen. So for example, a seven here corresponds to these dark blue tiles. If you can make out that they're dark blue because they're kind of similarly colored blue and eights correspond to these light blues. I got two sixes. Those are my platform tiles. Um, I have a zero and that's going to be this edge grass tile here and each value corresponds to a different image. And that's important to note because each one of those values represents an index inside of my tile sheet. So for example, this is tile zero, this is tile one, this is tile two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if you remember the platform tile was a six. That's because the platform tile image is at index six inside of my tile sheet. So I can go through my map and I can put two sixes into the map. And when I render that, I'm going to get two platform tile images rendered to the game board. So basically how I draw this map is I loop through it. I get the value at each index as I'm looping through it. And I then use some math on that index to get the X and Y position that I'm going to blit to the tile map on the screen. And I'm going to use the value to see where that tile is located inside of the tile sheet. So now you know a little bit about the game world, I'm going to come up here, slowly scroll to the render function. So like I said, we're doing some looping. 
So we loop through the world.map array, and that's just that array of all the tile values. We're going to loop through every single index of that. We're going to get the tile value, which corresponds to the index of each different tile in the tile sheet. So that's going to be the value here, and we're getting that directly out of the world.map array. And now we do some math. So the source X and source Y value just corresponds to where we're going to start cutting a rectangle out of our tile sheet. So let's say I walk through this and I have a value of one. So let's look at what value one is in our tile sheet. So remember this is index zero, this is index one. So one is this right facing grass tile. So if I come over to my map here, I zoom in, these two tiles are one tiles, these right facing grass tiles here. And if I look at my map, I scroll down to the map area and I come in here, actually it's just one tile. One tile here is a right facing grass tile and it's this tile right here. So in my render function, when I run into a value of one, that's the value, it will be one. I'm gonna plug that number into my source X and source Y variables and that's going to direct me to that one tile in my tile sheet. So let's look at the math that goes into that. So to get the X position of the tile that we're cutting out of the tile sheet in the tile sheet image, we take the value, so let's say one, we use modulus, the number of columns in our tile sheet, and that's three. So one modulus three is just gonna be one. And then we multiply it by the tile width, of each tile in our tile, she tile sheet. So one modulus three is one. One times 16 is just 16. So we know that we have to be at position 16 in the source of our tile sheet. And we are, so this would be position 16 or X of 16 inside of our tile sheet. So now we need to get the Y position and that's source Y. So we use math.floor and we get the value and remember that was one. 1 divided by the number of columns, which is 3. 1 divided by 3 is 0.333 repeating. Math.floor on point anything less than 1 is just going to be 0, so we get 0. And then we multiply that by the tile height of each tile in our tile sheet. So that is just going to be 0. So the source x was 16, and now the source y is 0. So if I come up here, I have the source x position that I'm going to cut from is x of 16, which is right here, and the y position is 0, so I get the starting position of right here. And then, of course, the width and height that I'm going to cut out of my tile is just going to be 16 and 16, just the tile width and tile height. So if I come back up to my render function here, and I skip over the destination real quick, I'm going to draw that image, I'm going to hand in the tile sheet image itself, that's the image I'm going to be cutting from. I'm going to start cutting at the source X and source, source Y positions, and I'm going to cut out a rectangle that is 16 pixels wide by 16 pixels high, or whatever the tile height and tile width is of that tile sheet. The next thing I need to know is the destination X and the destination Y. So I just found out what the source X and source Y was of this tile. Now I need to find out where in this big tile map this tile needs to go. So remember, it needs to go pretty much right here where this one tile is. So let's again figure out what that value is going to be. So as I'm looping through my tile map, I'm going to be starting at index 0 and I'm going to be looping through all these different tiles. So I start at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So in my loop, as I'm looping through all my tiles, I'm now at position 16. And if I come down to my destination X and destination Y values where I set them, index is going to be 16. Now, remember world.columns was 8, so index modulus world.coms, that's going to be 16, right, index 16, modulus world.coms, which is 8, 16 modulus 8 is going to be 0, 0 times 
the tile width, which is 16, that's just going to be zero. And remember, destination X is just where we're going to blit the tile to on the final image, so the game board. So that X value was zero, and as you can see, this tile here is at an X position of zero. Now we're going to get the Y, and I'm doing this math on the fly as I go, so if I get something wrong, don't hold it against me. So destination Y is the same thing just for the Y axis. So remember we had an index of 16 and the world.coms was eight. 16 divided by eight is two. Actually, this math is not as hard as I thought it was gonna be. So math.floor on 16 divided by two or divided by eight, which is two. Math.floor on two is just gonna be two. Two times the tile width. Oh, actually this should be tile height. That's my bad. Tile height there. They're the same value, so they're interchangeable. This is just for demonstration here. But uh, 2 times 16 is going to give us 32. So that Y position is going to be 32. So remember, each tile is 16 by 16 pixels. So we start at 0. This would be 16. And this one tile here is going to start at a Y position of 32. So destination X is 0. Destination Y is 32. And we have x of 0 here and y of zero or 32 here. So this tile, its position is 0 and 32. And the width and height are, again, just going to be the tile width and tile height. So when we come down here and draw this to our buffer, we cut it out of the image at the source x and source y and the tile width and height dimensions. And then we draw it to the final game board at destination X and destination Y and the tile width and height. So hopefully my explanation on how to blit tiles from a tile sheet onto a game screen was helpful to you guys. If you didn't like my explanation in the video, be sure to go to my GitHub page and check out the source code that I have linked in the description on my GitHub page. Everything is fully syntax highlighted. You don't have to download anything. You can look at it right in a browser window. Right now, you just go down and click on that link and check it out and learn it for yourself. Download it, use it how you like. I just hope you guys learned something. So if you did learn something, like and subscribe to my channel. I'm gonna have more cool content coming out soon. If you didn't like something, go ahead and leave a comment in the comments section. Tell me how I can improve my content. Anyway guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.